Welcome to the Red Light Report, your number one source for all things red light therapy, where you will learn how to optimize your health, wellness, and longevity with the power of photobiomodulation. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Belkowski. Welcome back, everybody. First and foremost, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. I hope every single one of you had a fun, relaxing, decompressing, reinvigorating holiday season and uh, flipping of the calendar into the new year. Kind of like I did last year, for those who remember and that have been listening to the Red Light Report for some time, I started last year on kind of an interesting note going over some very interesting research from really the early to mid-1900s and even the 1800s from the book by Fritz Hallwich, in which we looked at the effects of light entering the eye and the virtually endless health benefits or really just health implications of light entering the eye or light not entering the eye in the case of wearing sunglasses or having contacts on or glasses themselves or a clouded lens or, or going blind, the, the health ramifications are incredible. So so for those who have just been joining the Red Light Report recently, I would highly, highly recommend you go check out, I think it's a three-part series at the beginning of 2022, my first three episodes of the year. The information is groundbreaking, but once again, It's quote unquote old information that we've kind of forgotten and thrown to the side. And that's really why I'm so fervent about optimizing your light environment, not just indoors and not just outdoors. It's both. But really, what does that mean? And what does that mean for your physiology, both all encompassing, meaning your cardiovascular system, your nervous system, your endocrine system, everything is impacted by full spectrum light being the sunlight entering your eye and the cascade of events that happen because of that. Or if you live in a dark environment or your eyes don't have the ability to allow light to go all the way and excite the neurons and send it back to the suprachiasmatic nucleus and to the brain and the pituitary gland, pineal gland, and the downstream effects of that. So if you have a healthy light and healthy eye for that light to enter, you're going to have normal physiology. You're going to have a healthy physiology. But of course, over, over time in this modern day in life, We've demonized the sun, we, we stay indoors, we wear sunglasses, and or we wear glasses, which also disallows UV light from entering the eyes, or we wear contacts, which disallow light from entering the eyes. As we age, we do get clouded vision, so to speak, which also disallows enough UV light from entering the eye, or those who are, who are legally blind and beyond, UV light is not able to enter the eye. And so there are not just visual impacts because of that, but there are health ramifications. And of course, I'm kind of going off on another soapbox here already. Didn't take long in 2023, did it guys? (laughs) But just a quick reminder, even if you did listen to it, it might be good to review those three episodes because I cannot speak about it enough, as you can tell, both just the quality of the information, the impact of the information, the ramifications of your own health. And again, it's all free. It's just understanding and recognizing and then adapting accordingly to the information. So that's my pitch for that three-part episode series to begin 2022. And I bring that up because I want to start off on a similar foot this year in 2023, where I'll be going over some rather riveting, impactful, hopefully life-changing information for you guys to start this year. And while it doesn't have to do with red light therapy specifically, in a sense, it has to do with another type of light, the invisible light that comes from the earth itself. And you've heard me talk about it on solo sodes. You've heard me talk about it off and on with different people I interview. But I'm going to start this year off by going over grounding. Because the more I read about it, the more I learn about it. And I've been utilizing it myself the last handful of years. And as a disclosure, I didn't give two hoots or even two thoughts about it up until I was exposed to it just a handful of years ago. And most of the thank you from my end goes to Dr. Jack Cruz and introducing me to watching the morning sunrise, doing it while grounded. So I just utilized it because I believed in him and his information and his research. And so I've been doing it for the last over three years now. 
But again, I didn't really dive into the research hardcore or the information of as to how grounding works. What are the real life impacts? How long do you need to do it? What can it help with? And, and so on and so forth. I picked up a book by someone by the name of Clint Ober. And I first heard about Clint Ober on a Ben Greenfield podcast years ago. And that's really where I first got exposed to the many ways that grounding can help. And again, it's another free, simple, let's call it a life hack or just life habit that we should all be integrating on a daily basis, if not most of our waking hours and sleeping hours, as you will learn. The impacts of grounding are massive. And so that's why I'm so excited to start this new year with this quote unquote newish information, or at least dig into the details. If, if I, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with grounding and or practice it yourselves. I'm not sure how, how many of you have dove deeply into the research or to the information. But regardless, we're going to cover it here in the next couple of episodes. Because again, the more I read, the more I learn, the more I want to get this information out to the masses, meaning my audience here. Because again, this is something where you can integrate it while doing things like watching the sunrise, reading a book, doing some breathing exercises, doing some meditation, or, or just sitting outside and enjoying nature and enjoying uh, what's going on around you, getting some sun exposure. So it's just another thing you can easily integrate into your daily routine, not to mention there are products that you can utilize while you're at your desk. So you can be literally grounding to the earth while you're at your desk. There's products that you can have to integrate into your bed, whether it's the mattress itself or some sheets that are grounded, and thus you can be grounded the entire time you're sleeping. And so we'll go over the many health impacts of that. But you guys know how excited and how passionate I am about red light therapy specifically. But I don't want to get too myopic in the sense that light is not the end all be all. While it is, I would argue, one of the more important aspects of your life, meaning your light environment, I do want to give you guys a more comprehensive, well rounded sense of health or, or health information that's out there. Because Yes, you can utilize red light therapy for so many different things, but what if you combine that with grounding? What if you combine that with some cold thermogenesis? What if you combine that with like a ketogenic diet or some high intensity exercise? You know what I mean? Just a more comprehensive approach to health versus just being so steadfast in one lane because I know a lot of people get hooked up on on perfecting their diet and like the diet is the end all be all or then you have those exercise enthusiasts and it's like exercise is the end all be all and then you have people where it's like sleep and sleep is the end all be all and then you have people like me <laughs> where, where light is the end all be all my point being is each one of those independently are important but combining them all together is going to give you the best bang for your buck with your health approach and so that's why i want to present this information today for those first couple of episodes during 2023 to get you off on the right foot, so to speak, with this earthing or with this grounding. And, and that's the title of the book. It is Earthing, the Most Important Health Discovery Ever. And so again, it's by Clint Ober. And I'm proud to say he's from Billings, Montana, just down the road from Missoula, Montana. And then also Stephen Sinatra, who's an MD, and Martin Zucker. So those are the three authors of the book. And so when I go through books, I like to highlight important areas or bracket long paragraphs of important information that I want to review or just remember if I'm going to pull this book off the shelf in the future and just kind of want to breeze through the pages and see what the important takeaways are. That's kind of my approach when I'm reading a book, if I want to review it later, just making some side notes on the edge of the pages and whatnot. So I'm just going to go through the first half of the book today. Again, just reading the highlights or the, what I find are the important parts. But if you find this information riveting or interesting, or you want to dive a little deeper, I highly, highly recommend checking out this book. And there is a link in the show notes to this episode if you want to go check out that book on Amazon. And so let's just begin with one of the sub headings in the first chapter, which is what is earthing? Because Clint has also called grounding earthing. And so earthing and grounding are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. So let's begin there. What is earthing? Earthing is both a timeless practice and a modern discovery. It simply means living in contact with the earth's natural surface charge, 
being grounded, which naturally charges and prevents chronic inflammation in the body. This effect has massive health implications because of the strong link between chronic inflammation and virtually all chronic disease, including the diseases of aging and the aging process itself. But don't we all live on the earth, you may be thinking? Yes, we live on the earth, but most of us don't touch the earth anymore. Throughout practically all of history, we humans have maintained a direct physical connection with the earth, the skin of our bodies touching the skin of the earth. We walked barefoot and slept directly on the ground. We were at all times naturally charged with the healing energy of the earth. Today, we mostly live and work insulated from the earth. We wear non-conductive shoes with synthetic soles, walk on carpeted floors, and sleep in elevated beds. We do not live on the ground. We live and work high off the ground in high rises. We rarely go barefoot outside. We're disconnected. We're earth-starved. Consequently, our bodies have become chronically charged with inflammation, an unnatural development, and one that appears to represent an overlooked reason why immune dysfunction and inflammation-related health disorders have dramatically proliferated, ravaging adults and children alike. We've lost our electrical roots, the Earth's electrical ground that serves as our primordial anti-inflammatory protection. Earthing offers a simple remedy for the disconnect. It's as easy as being barefoot outdoors or sleeping, working, and relaxing indoors on conductive systems designed for the house and office. Whether outdoors or indoors, you are reconnecting to the Earth's natural surface charge and restoring an electrical state in your physiology. This book documents how reconnecting and grounding the body consistently produces these and other common benefits. Rapid reduction of inflammation. Rapid reduction or elimination of chronic pain. Dynamic blood flow improvement to better supply the cells and tissues of the body with vital oxygen and nutrition. Reduced stress. Increased energy. Improved sleep. Accelerated healing from injuries and surgery. And, and to step away from the book for a moment, do not, do not all of those benefits resemble the benefits of red light therapy? And if we step back for a moment and think about it, it makes sense because, again, they're both forms of wave energy or frequencies. They're both light because, remember, they're all part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is all light, both visible and invisible. And remember, the visible spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum is a very, 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 very small fraction. So we have all of this energy that's coming up from the Earth, and it's essentially free electrons. Just like the sunlight, it's free electrons. And what do our mitochondria need to produce ATP and easy water or biological water? They need electrons. So it makes sense that a lot of the benefits of grounding are very similar to the benefits of red light therapy just through a different avenue. It's through being in contact with the earth versus being exposed to red and near-infrared light. Well, guys, the holiday season may be over, but you can still save big. We've had this for some time now. BioLite has what's called bundles. So simply go to the BioLite website, BioLite.shop, go into products, and there will be a tab for bundles. With each of these bundles, there's three of them, you save 20% off on the entire package. For example, we have the Beauty Bundle, which includes a Shine and Stand, a Guardian Plus, and the Longev Revive Cream. So that bundle of three products, you save 20% off the entire package. There's the Recovery Bundle. That includes the Recharge Plus panel, the Guardian mouthpiece, and then the Longev Recover Cream. And that Recover Cream is just like the Revive Cream, except it has added CBD oil infused into it. That package of three items all comes at 20% off. And then the last bundle, which is the most versatile bundle in the sense that you get to pick and choose what products you want. You get to pick and choose from the Recharge Plus panel, the Restore Plus panel, or the Matrix Full Body Mat. And then you get to choose between the Guardian and Guardian Plus. And then you get to choose between the Revive and the Recover Cream. It also includes the Shine and Stand, so you get to choose between black and silver. By purchasing those four products in the Ultimate Bundle, you save 20% off all of the products. You also save 20% off shipping. So literally, the entire package and shipping is 20% off. So if you're ever needing some red light therapy products and are looking for a discount, just remember, the bundles are always 20% off. 365 days a year, no coupon code necessary. Moving along in the book here, 
Earthing is among the most natural and safest things you can do to improve your health. Something simple yet astoundingly profound. It is not a treatment, but a hugely rewarding return to a core aspect of nature that we have abandoned. Earthing is a missing link in the health question. This book tells why and what to do about it. And so in the second and third chapters here, which we're going to kind of skip over here for the most part, Clint and the authors, they go into how our ancestors were so connected with the earth and how in this modern world and in in our modern lifestyles, we've become so disconnected from the earth. Very similar, I mean, exactly the same to as being disconnected from the sun. Our indoor lifestyle has taken us away from the sun. And in the same way, shoes and living in our houses has disconnected us from the earth, which was providing us with so much free electrons and so much nutrition and anti-inflammatory cure, at least for our ancestors. So in modern day, we're no longer grounding to earth. We're no longer receiving those many, many benefits, which the book will go over here in a bit, of gaining those free electrons from the earth, just like getting those free electrons and that nutrition from full spectrum light. So that's what the second chapter goes over. And then the third chapter speaks upon inflammation and the rampant rise of inflammation the past handful of decades and how that coincides with the exponential rise in many, many health conditions, you know, cardiovascular disease, obesity, different types of metabolic diseases or just metabolic syndrome in general. And so the authors, while there's not a direct correlation, they're just connecting the dots that could there be a a connection between being so disconnected from the earth and then this rampant rise in inflammation in, in these inflammatory conditions. Of course, it's much more complicated and multifactorial than that, but what they are advocating for based on their information and the research is that there may be a very close connection between a rise in disease and a rise in our disconnect from earth. So that's what those couple chapters go over, but we will touch on a couple of the ending points here in the third chapter, which is called the disconnect syndrome. And one of the sub headings is called disconnecting experimentally. What happens to the human body when it is separated from the subtle signals from the earth was dramatically shown by experiments in Germany at the world-famous Max Planck Institute during the 1960s and the 1970s. Researchers intentionally isolated volunteers for months at a time in underground rooms electrically shielded from the rhythms in the earth's electric field. Patterns of body temperature, sleep, urinary excretion, and other physiological activities were carefully monitored. All the participants developed a variety of abnormal or chaotic patterns, sort of like a head-to-toe arrhythmia. They experienced disturbed sleep and waking patterns, out-of-sync hormonal production, and an overall disruption in basic body regulation. When electric rhythms comparable to those measured at the Earth's surface were pulsed into the metal shielding around the underground chambers, there was a dramatic restoration of normal physiological patterns. These studies, involving hundreds of participants over many years, clearly documented the significance of the Earth's electrical rhythms for normal biological function. Normal rhythms in the body established a stable reference point for repair, recovery, and rejuvenation in short, for full health. Clearly, the biological chaos induced in the experiments would lead in time to ill health. The conclusion is that the biological clock of the body needs to be continually calibrated by the pulse of the earth that governs the circadian rhythms of all life on the planet. And the next subsection here is called the shoe problem. And while I'm not going to read the entire section here, I'm going to read the highlights here of what I felt was important. So there's a podiatrist, the late Dr. William Rossi. He was a Massachusetts podiatrist, a footwear industry historian, prolific author, and a keen observer, you know, on top of being a podiatrist. And so this is some of his thoughts on the impact of humanity going from walking barefoot, i.e. our ancestors, to modern day where everyone wears shoes basically all day long that they're out of their house. He goes on to say that, The sole or plantar surface of the foot is richly covered with some 1,300 nerve endings per square inch. 
That's more than found on any part of the body of comparable size. The paws of all animals are equally rich in nerve endings. And so every living thing, including human beings, draws energy from this field through its feet, paws, or roots. Same thing as we have feet, animals have paws, the trees have roots, and so that's how they are tapped in to the electromagnetic field of the earth. And so some people are calling shoes the world's most dangerous invention. After almost 20 years of lifestyle research, David Wolf, who's an author, nutritionist, and speaker, incriminates the shoe as one of the most destructive culprits of inflammation and autoimmune diseases in our lives because it separates us from the healing energy of the earth. Put a shoe on, he says, and it's gone, meaning the healing energy. So that's kind of some interesting food for thought. Just like last year, at the beginning of the year, we're talking about the impact of the light entering your eyes and the ramifications of that and the ramifications of wearing sunglasses You're basically putting a tarp over a tree in the sense of photosynthesis when you put sunglasses over your eyes. Now we have to look at our feet in terms of grounding. Shoes are the sunglasses of our feet. If we put shoes on, we're constantly wearing shoes all day, especially when we're outside. We're literally disconnected from the healing powers of the earth. So I just want you guys to think about that as we move along here. And so moving on here... Nowadays, even makers of fancy men's dress shoes are increasingly switching to rubber, plastic, and other non-conductive material, just as casual and work shoes before them. Leather, which is processed from hides, is a conductive material when moist and has been the traditional source of shoes and sandals. Nowadays, everything is made with rubber regarding shoes, whereas before, they were made with leather. And leather, like if you have leather slippers or leather shoes, meaning even the bottom is leather, not rubber, you can walk outside and you're still going to be grounding because leather is conductive, rubber is non-conductive. So anytime you put something on your foot that has rubber on it or a non-conductive material, you're disconnected from the earth. But wearing leather slippers or leather moccasins or leather shoes of some sort, you're still connected if you're outside walking on the ground. Uh, So lastly here, the human foot, Dr. Rossi wrote, is rich with vibratory and electromagnetic powers linked to earth contact, which is one reason for its age-old association with human fertility and the reproductive system. Some food for thought there regarding fertility and, and reproduction for those or if you know anyone having issues, simply grounding and getting those free electrons may move the needle in the right direction. And so then there's some sections on beds and the impact of sleeping, you know, above the ground, meaning no longer disconnected to the earth like our ancestors. And so in that section, it says, unless you live on a dirt, cement, marble, or stone floor, it is unlikely you are receiving any good vibes from below, meaning being grounded. And so I don't think many of us anymore sleep on dirt, cement, marble, or stone floor. So we are all disconnected from earth while we're sleeping, which is around a third of our life, we are not grounded, whereas our ancestors were. And as we will learn further on in the book here, there are ways we can ground ourselves the entire time we're sleeping so we can receive the many uh, healing benefits of grounding every time we go to bed. And then so moving on, this is a big section here uh, that's entitled Living Things as Antennas. And so one of the things I highlighted is think of our bodies and forms as antennas. So the French naturalist said that humans should look at examples within the animal world to see why reconnection with earth is so necessary. Notice that a cow left in a stable with a more limited conduction of electricity due to the insulating effect of the building is usually cold and chilly, he wrote. Put this same cow in the fields under the same weather conditions and it is quite comfortable. The cold nights are bearable. Chickens in the natural state of roaming never get sick. Chickens, isolated by their coop, need to be covered and protected. And look at the medicines that are required for the captive chicken. The quail in the wild have equal happiness in the winter as in summer without covering, without special lodging. 
The dog who is kept too long in the same habituation as his master and does not get into contact with the earth, as nature intended, is keeping the veterinarian very busy. In the wild, the sanitary state of animals is excellent, especially if it has not been soiled by the touch of man. Despite conditions seemingly uncomfortable to our eyes, and probably because of those conditions, the wild animal knows no sickness. This privileged benefit is the result of his accomplishing his right to life by the proper exchange of electric mediums. Be inspired by the wild animal that can survive so well on his own because of his constant contact with the earth. Compare yourself to him a little. Within the context of modern times, Tavera, the French naturalist, offered a variety of practical suggestions that could seemingly fit into most of our lifestyles. They include the following. 1. Walk into the wilderness and choose the grassy areas instead of the asphalt roads. Try to walk barefooted or at least with a covering that allows electrical contact or exchange. You will notice the difference in your mood, your health. It will keep you alive with joy in your heart. Number 2. As often as possible, expose any part of the skin of your body to the earth or grass or any natural water, lake, stream, or ocean. In your garden, moist grass is the perfect conductor. Number three, use the trunk of a tree to lean on and rob it of some of its electricity for your health's benefit. And number four, bathing, especially in ocean water because of the salts, or lake or river, is extremely good for you. If you can, walk barefoot in these waters. If you have ever done it, you have already seen the benefits on your nervous system, your sleeping, your appetite, and your attitude. When you are linked to the earth and involved in the electric exchanges, you start feeling like a human being again. So the next couple of chapters here go over how the authors came upon grounding and how they discovered it more or less, and then how they began to run studies to prove what they found actually to be the case as far as being anti-inflammatory and being able to reduce pain rather instantaneously. And especially Clint Ober, since he wasn't a scientist or a doctor, and the fact that he just kind of fell upon grounding as this amazing healing modality, he had a very difficult time talking to doctors or talking to scientists or talking to researchers, getting them to believe that simply connecting your bare feet to the earth could lead to these amazing healing benefits. I mean, he had doctors laughing at him. He had researchers saying, yeah, right, like that's not even possible or everything in between just because he wasn't a scientist. So he basically got laughed off by a lot of people. And so he had to basically start doing his own small research studies to kind of get the ball rolling. With one of his first studies where he had people sleep with some of his homemade grounding pads, these are some of the results he got. 85% went to sleep more quickly. 93% reported sleeping better throughout the night. 82% experienced a significant reduction in muscle stiffness. 74% experienced elimination or reduction of chronic back and joint pain. 100% reported feeling more rested when they woke up. 78% reported improved general health. And so again, that was a very early study and with his homemade one foot by two foot mattress pads. So people were sleeping on these grounded pads. They're grounded to the earth outside and those are the results they got. So that kind of got the ball rolling and was more or less proof in the pudding for Clint that it was like, aha, I'm onto something here. Moving along to another research that Clint conducted, or at least he got done by another scientist or researcher, this study, it was published in 2004 in the issue of Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, and the conclusion was significant. Earthing during sleep resynchronizes cortisol secretion more in alignment with its natural, normal rhythm, highest at 8 a.m., lowest at midnight. And subjectively, the participants reported improved sleep along with reduced pain and stress. Even more impressive was the fact that the improvements often occurred within the very first days of sleeping grounded. And following is a summary of the findings. All but two subjects developed more natural cortisol rhythm, and one of the exceptions was someone already in a normal pattern. 11 of 12 participants said they fell asleep faster. All 12 reported waking up fewer times during the night. 
from an average of 2.5 times to 1.4 times, so a 44% reduction. 9 out of 12 said they felt more refreshed and less fatigued with more daytime energy, while 3 reported no change. Of the 11 subjects who said before grounding that their pain interfered with general activities, 7 now reported improvement and only 4 said there was no change. 9 out of 12 described reductions in their emotional stress and were less bothered by problems such as anxiety, depression, and irritability. 2 said there was no change, 1 said the stress was worse. 6 out of 7 participants with gastrointestinal symptoms reported improvements. 5 out of 6 women with either PMS and or hot flashes said their symptoms were better. All 3 individuals with TMJ or TMD, jaw pain, said their discomfort was less. Those were kind of the first couple of studies Clinton was able to get off the ground. One which was kind of with this homemade grounding pad and this other one where he got a scientist that could look at something more objective such as the cortisol levels. And so that's where the eyes of the scientific community kind of got on board is once these couple of studies were out there. And so that was with Clint Ober's story. But then the following chapter is about Steve Sinatra the MD, and his story of how he got on board with grounding. This is what Dr. Sinatra had to say regarding earth and body medicine. So Clint, with his knowledge of electricity and grounding cable TV systems, now began to exhaustively study physiology and the immune system. He quickly began putting two and two together. Electrical engineers know that the surface of the earth is pulsating with free electrons. Medical scientists didn't know that, but they did know that the body is electrical in nature and that free radical molecules attract electrons and snatch them from other molecules, a process at the core of inflammation, tissue destruction, and disease. Clint theorized that if earthing reduces pain, it must come from reducing or neutralizing the free radicals causing the pain during the inflammatory process. The free electrons must be putting out the fire. So I thought that was very interesting and just resonates with everything we know about red light therapy and how it's anti-inflammatory. And again, we're getting free electrons from the light. And so in the same way with grounding or earthing, you're accruing free electrons that put the fire out of inflammation or those free radicals, the oxidizing free radicals. And so same thing, if you have electron-rich water, that's another way to accrue free electrons. And then the next subsection here is sleeping and fishing grounded. Again, this is the story from Dr. Steve Sinatra. He goes on to say that for years, I used to suffer with flare-ups of psoriasis, a common inflammatory condition of the skin. It would appear on my lower legs and elbows. I had always noticed that whenever I would go bone fishing off the Florida coast, a favorite recreational pursuit of mine, the psoriasis would virtually disappear for weeks afterward. I attributed that to the healing influence of being out in the sun, the vitamin D, the minerals in the salt water, and the time off from the daily stresses of a busy cardiology practice. In bone fishing, you spend hours casting for fish and a fly rod while walking on white sand flats knee deep in crystal clear water. After meeting Clint, I realized that there was another reason for the improvement of the psoriasis. I was grounded, barefoot in salt water that is highly conductive. As I was fishing, I was simultaneously giving myself a treatment. Now that I ground myself at night, the psoriasis is virtually gone. So that's just another anecdote, and they're constantly throughout the book here, and we'll cover more, of how grounding is improving these seemingly difficult conditions to treat, such as psoriasis. Any type of autoimmune condition is relatively difficult to treat, and typically is is treated with a host of different pharmaceuticals, it becomes a polypharmacy treatment, or it's just you're, you're going from doctor to doctor, uh, whether it's allopathic or even natural, and, and it can get pretty difficult to treat. So something as simple as being consistently connected with earth, if that could improve your psoriasis, if that could improve your lupus, if that could improve any type of autoimmune disease, A, it's free, and B, it works and see, it's natural and safe. So again, like red light therapy, it's a win-win-win. And so moving along to the third part of the book, so part three, it's called Connecting with Science. And the chapter here, chapter seven, is called 
the original anti-inflammatory. And the section I'm going to turn straight to in this chapter is called Chronic Inflammation Equals Electron Deficiency. The first part of the, the subsection here is about acute inflammation and how that's that's a normal, healthy process because it alarms your body that, that there's an issue. But then they go on to say that then there is chronic or prolonged inflammation. That you don't want. Chronic inflammation means a progressive shift in the type of activity going on at the site of inflammation. You get simultaneous destruction and healing of the tissue, but a harmful free radical encroachment into the healthy surrounding territory. The destruction derby continues, and it can seriously harm you. Free radicals obviously have starring roles in the immune response, but problems arise when the process fails to wind down completely after the job is done. The good guys become bad guys on a rampage, ripping up innocent, healthy cells. Think of security dogs that snag the burglar and then go after their owner. They continue attacking and oxidize healthy tissue. The immune system gears switch into overdrive, sending in more white blood cells than produce more free radicals. This activity is why free radicals have a bad rap and why scientists unanimously agree that free radical activity is at the basis of chronic disease and the aging process, particularly accelerated aging and limited lifespan. We believe that normal inflammation veers out of control because of lost contact with the earth. People are suffering from an electron deficiency, not enough free electrons on hand to satisfy the lust of rampaging free radicals. They continue to attack the adjacent neighborhood of the healthy tissue in an ever-expanding vicious cycle. The non-stop attack mode generates an autoimmune response manifesting as chronic inflammation. The immune system has run amok, attacking its owner, you. The next subsection is inflammation as a disease maker. They go along here. There, there's some interesting research done by a German pathologist, Rudolf Virchow, in the, in the mid-1800s. And there was a series of important studies beginning in 2000, thanks to this German pathologist. And there was evidence from a woman's study that monitored 28,000 initially healthy postmenopausal women, and they introduced a new cardiovascular risk factor into the spotlight, which was C-reactive protein, or CRP, a biochemical substance measured in the blood that indicates the presence of inflammation. People with the highest level of CRP had five times the risk of developing cardiovascular disease and four times the risk of a heart attack or stroke compared to individual with the lowest level. CRP, the researcher said, predicted risk in women who had none of the standard risk factors and was the best predictor among 12 risk factors studied, including cholesterol. Harvard cardiologist Paul Ridker was the lead researcher and said, We have to think of heart disease as an inflammatory disease, just as we think of rheumatoid arthritis as an inflammatory disease. Dr. Ridker estimated that approximately 25% of Americans have normal to low cholesterol, lulling them into complacency, but at the same time, they have elevated CRP and they don't know about it. This means that millions are currently unaware that they have an increased risk for future cardiovascular trouble. In the arteries, think of low-grade inflammation as a silent creeping fire that consumes tissue. It leads to the weakening and eventual rupture of arterial plaques that directly trigger heart attacks and stroke. The CRP inflammation link helps explain why so many heart attack and stroke victims have normal cholesterol levels. Another example of common disorders increasingly being seen as inflammation-based is diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the kind that affects youngsters, the body's immune system attacks the pancreatic cells that make insulin. Insulin is the hormone responsible for controlling the blood sugar level and opening all the cell doors to sugar for the use in energy production. Research also suggests that type 2 diabetes, the most common form of the disease and generally occurring in adulthood, begins with insulin resistance. This means that energy production stops responding properly to insulin. The reason for this, researchers believe, is an excess of inflammatory substances released from fatty tissue, particularly the abdomen. Fat cells, once thought to be merely storage deposits for energy and metabolically inert, are now known to be hotbeds of inflammation. 
This connection helps explain why obesity leads to diabetes. In addition, some studies suggest that eating certain foods may stoke more inflammation in the body and raise the risk of diabetes. They include foods high in sugar and other sweeteners, white flour products, trans fats, polyunsaturated vegetable oils, and processed meats. And moving along in the chapter here, along with the continuing flow of revelations regarding inflammation, researchers have also accumulated much evidence demonstrating that painful conditions are often the result of acute or chronic inflammation. One pain expert has postulated that the origin of all pain is inflammation and the inflammatory response. Many physicians and researchers wonder what has caused inflammation to become so dangerously commonplace. When asked what causes inflammation in the first place, Harvard's David Ridker said this, We are witnessing evolutionary biology in action. An adaptive response, being inflammation, in the past is now maladaptive in our current modern environment. The discovery of the relationship of grounding to inflammation suggests that the once adaptive response called inflammation has maybe gone sour because of an electron deficiency from the loss of direct contact with the earth. So that's basically a summary of all of these diseases we have from cardiovascular disease, you know, with with a CRP blood marker to type 1 and type 2 diabetes, these inflammatory based diseases. And here's a list here I'll go over here in a moment that we're riddled with. And again, the authors are saying it's because we've lost connect with earth. We are electron deficient. And of course, I'm going to argue on top of that. And I agree with the authors. But on top of that, we've lost connect with the sun and with proper light. So imagine if all you did was get more uh, proper healthy sun exposure, both from the sunlight and or red light therapy, and then you're grounding on a consistent basis. Again, whether it's with earth or some of these grounding devices, that alone, just those two things, that alone could turn your health upside down in a good way. A complete 360 with two simple hacks. And then there's a table in the book here, conditions related to chronic inflammation, I'm sure every single one of these will ring a bell. How about allergies, Alzheimer's, ALS, anemia, arthritis, asthma, autism, cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes types 1 and 2, fibromyalgia, intestinal disorders, kidney failure, lupus, multiple sclerosis, pain, pancreatitis, psoriasis, and eczema. And all of those, according to the authors, can be mitigated, reduced, prevented, reversed with grounding. And they have the anecdotes to prove it. Moving on to another subsection here, and this is a big one. It's called Enter Earthing, the Missing Link. How do we know that the body absorbs the electrons from the earth? There are a number of ways we know. One is common sense. The earth is negatively charged it has a virtually infinite supply of free electrons. Anytime you have two conductive objects and they make contact, such as your bare feet and the ground, electrons will flow from the place where they are abundant to the place where there are fewer of them. The electrical potential of the two objects will thus equalize. That's grounding. Similarly, when you stick a ground rod in the earth, it allows the electrons to flow from the earth via a wire into an object. It could be a refrigerator, the shielding around a cable TV system, or you. Your body is conductive like a fridge. Free radicals and electrons constantly interact in high speed and in highly complex bioelectrochemical exchanges. Many free radicals are regarded in terms of being positively charged molecules, but some can actually be neutral or even negatively charged. These reactive molecules hunger for electrons. The earth provides the body with a huge influx of electrons and reduces or shuts down the inflammatory destruction attributed to excess free radicals. If you have a battlefront with electrons seeking free radicals running amok inside your body, guess what's going to happen when you make contact with the earth? Big, negatively charged earth overwhelms little electron-hungry free radicals. I'm going to say that again. Big, negatively charged earth overwhelms little electron-hungry free radicals. 
So science backs up common sense. Science tells us that the body is one dynamic conductor of electrical impulses, or in the words of biophysicist James Oshman, the living matrix. Cells contain an internal framework known as the cytoskeleton that connects all parts of the cell, from the nucleus to the outer membrane. This scaffolding includes molecules that conduct energy and information inside each cell and outward to the surrounding environment, and in the opposite direction from the environment to the innermost parts of the cell and nucleus. Similarly, the surrounding environment, from your head to your toes, contains an extracellular network of conductive collagen and other proteins that are hardwired to cell membranes. Thus, the living matrix inside and outside cells provides a body-wide network for antioxidant electrons, a pathway hooking up all parts of the body, including the nervous system and all sensory receptors, with all parts of every cell, including the genome in every cell. This pervasive system has extensions into every nook and cranny of the body and really represents, when you think about it, the largest organ system in the body. It is the quote-unquote stuff of all living structures. Electrons are the smallest possible negative charges of electricity. It is well established that negative charges, electrons, are attracted to positive charges. Connecting the body to the earth automatically enables the conductive tissues of the body's living matrix to become charged with the earth's free electrons. When this occurs, excess or residual immune response-free radicals, which are electron-hungry, suddenly have, as the old song goes, the object of their affection, a readily available supply of free electrons to bond with and reduce their oxidative and inflammatory mode. They are neutralized, quenched, satiated, and satisfied. Kind of like giving kids the keys to the ice cream store or opening the blood bank to Dracula. As a result, the addiction of the immune system produced free radicals to oxidize healthy tissue to obtain their fix of, a missing, uh, of missing electrons naturally disappears. The rampage is naturally inhibited and with the underlying mechanism of chronic inflammation and autoimmune disease. The body naturally conducts and becomes charged with the Earth's free electrons. That is, it equalizes with and maintains the natural electrical potential of the Earth. The end result, our observations and research indicate, is that the reconnection prevents or reduces chronic inflammation and consistently speeds recovery from exhaustion, acute trauma, and minor injuries. And so, typically, there's a quick reduction in inflammation-related aches and pain. Some acute headaches can vanish within minutes. The intensity of chronic pain often lessens significantly in 20 to 40 minutes. William Amalu, who is a chiropractor and president of the International Academy of Clinical Thermography, performed earthing studies on 20 patients with a variety of complaints, including chronic myofascial pain syndrome, muscular strains, ligamentous sprains, peripheral neuropathies, carpal tunnel syndrome, inflammatory joint conditions, Lyme's disease, and chronic sinusitis. The subjects were either grounded with conductive electrode patches in his office or slept on grounded bed pads at home. The results showed, through dramatic pictures, a major and rapid impact on inflammation and pain. A picture is worth a thousand words, um, and so th there's pictures in the book that you can refer to to, to view these changes um, um, via those pictures. So some patients experienced improvement in just one session. Within two to four weeks um, of doing two to three half an hour treatments weekly, up to 80% improvement occurred in the cases that were followed. With ongoing grounding over weeks and months, the patients continued to get relief, feel better, and in some cases, their symptoms vanished altogether. The moment your foot touches the earth or you connect to the earth through a wire, your physiology changes, uh, James Oshman says. An immediate normalization begins, and an anti-inflammatory switch is turned on. People stay inflamed because they never connect with the earth, the source of free electrons, which can neutralize the free radicals in the body that cause disease and cellular destruction. And so, with that final quote from James Oshman, we are going to wrap up today's uh, session on grounding or earthing, because... 
in order for me to get through half of the book, this episode would be twice as long. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to spare you guys of that because I think this is a great introduction, a great start, a great foundation to grounding. Um, and I know a lot of that can be kind of sciencey, and uh, we got through some of the weeds there, but but especially starting next week uh, with next week's solo sode on grounding, um, just like the chapter is called, we're going to start connecting the dots of grounding and get even more specific, read about more anecdotes and more stories of how uh, people have relieved all types of acute and chronic pains, whether whether it's low back or migraines or uh, a chronic hip pain of 10 plus years that was relieved just by sleeping on a, um, a grounded uh, bed pad and, and so much more. And so I'm excited that we got the ball rolling here today. Uh, with with the first about third of the book here, but I'm very excited for the next couple of solo sodes as we really, again, as the chapter is called, connect the dots and just put more proof in the pudding of the power of grounding. Again, I mean, the free electrons live up to their name. It's free. It's grounding. Simply get outside in your bare foot. And of course, just like you can uh, get that free sun, there are some benefits to having a red light therapy device. So if you're someone like me who's indoors um, in the office quite often, maybe you you would benefit from, or not not maybe benefit from, but maybe you would like to invest in an actual product so you can be grounding even when you're not outside. Uh, The best bang for your buck or the most most natural way, of course, is to be grounded with the earth, but that's something I'm going to be looking into in the very near future is getting a grounding mat for my office and then either grounding sheets or a grounding uh, pad for my bed. Uh, because as, as you'll learn here in the book, you know, a little spoiler alert, uh, Clint tells us that the more often you can be grounded, the better the effects will be. Um, meaning, and, and there's actually even some science that Clint points to that once you stop grounding, some of the benefits stop almost immediately. So once you disconnect from the earth, you disconnect from those benefits. So as, as you'll learn in the subsequent uh, solo sodes here, you want to be grounded as often as possible. And so being grounded while you're sleeping is great, but being grounded while you're sleeping and throughout the day is going to be the best bang for your buck. So so again, we'll cover that in the subsequent couple of episodes, but I hope today was a good foundation and, and learning session as far as grounding and, and it's uh, the implications of it. Again, even if it just reduced inflammation, that alone is going to mitigate and prevent a lot of inflammatory conditions. And as we know, most conditions are inflammatory based. I'd just be interested if, if some of this grounding research looked into the mitochondria as well. But, but of course, the fact that we know we're accruing electrons and the electrons have to go through the electron transport chain, we know that grounding has a benefit, a massive, massive benefit to our mitochondria. So I'm all about red light therapy because of its impact on, on health and specifically the function of the mitochondria. Because the more healthy, the more functional you can keep your mitochondria, the longer and healthier you will live. So I see grounding as a massive, massive uh, tool that we all need to be utilizing if we're we're all trying to optimize our mitochondrial health, uh, both for the short term and long term of our own health and, and health span and longevity. So... Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's a little off the beaten path from from red and near infrared light, but again, it's another form of light, another way to optimize mitochondrial health. And so, I think it's a good way to start off 2023 with with kind of a new intervention you can add to your um, to your health stack and to your to your health regimen. Uh, but as always, guys, appreciate you listening to the end here. If you haven't already, please go ahead, leave a quick five-star review on Apple Podcast or Spotify. Uh, it takes less than 15 seconds. Just just go to that app and leave a quick five-star review. It doesn't have to be written. And on Spotify, as a matter of fact, you can't even write one. So just uh, click that five-star review. So that way, uh, more people can can learn about the many benefits of red light therapy and other health tactics such as grounding Uh, because the more reviews we can get the higher this podcast can rank and the more people can learn about this information just like you did so without further further ado guys i hope you have a wonderful week looking forward to continuing this grounding journey with you guys and and kicking off 2023 on the right foot so have a wonderful week and as always light up your health thank you for listening to the red light report if you like what you heard today Go ahead and leave us a review on iTunes and other podcast platforms to help spread the word. 
so other people can learn about the many health, wellness, and longevity benefits of red light therapy. If you're looking for more educational content, check out our Instagram page at biolight.shop and our YouTube channel, Biolight. I'm Dr. Mike Belkowski, and I'll see you on the next episode.